Welcome to another Talk War Gaming review, and in this video we will be unboxing something that we haven't yet looked at before. It is the uh, the Secrets of the Third Reich game from um, West Wind Productions. So as well as the British Star set that we've got here, there is also several others. One for the USA, one for the Soviets, and one for the German forces. Uh, like this, they each contain a roughly um, inventory platoon sized amount of miniatures, and it's uh, plenty enough to get you going with the game. So, like I said earlier, it's um, a starter set for the British forces, so let's see what we actually get inside on the back. Um, we get a British Command, a British Sniper Team, British Commando Carbine Squad, uh, British PFDs, which are a kind of anti-tank weapon, personal infantry anti-tank, uh, anti-met rifles, a uh, heavy section, and a HMG team. So, we've got a little bit of uh, blurb on the back as well, give you some of the uh, background on what is actually in here. So uh, let's open this up and see what's inside. So take the, uh, the slip case off here, uh, West Wind Productions of course, the manufacturers of this game, and we just open the box and we can see that we have a, a bag of solder bases with the, the beveled edges there, um, a few 28mm ones and a larger 30mm one there, and we have all the miniatures in this bag here. So uh, let's open this bag and take a closer look at the models themselves. So I've zoomed in a bit so we can get a better look at the detailing on the miniatures and the first squad that I'm going to go for is the command squad. So as you can see, I've been the fourth man in there, it's a uh, four man squad. Um, none of them come with heads attached so they come on these um, separate head sprues, uh, I'll talk more about those later on. And here you can see the officer armed with his uh, Webley pistol, uh, looking very commanding there. And we have the uh, the medic because he's got his uh, little medic bag there and we've got a couple more infantrymen to accompany them. You could have these representing um, uh, radio operators or you can replace these out with some of the heavy weapon guys that we'll be looking at in a bit as well. So these miniatures have been uh, cast in white metal which does afford um, a greater degree of uh, detailing as you can see in the um, the miniatures here. So we've got the commander there and you can see his webbing is nicely picked out and all the straps on the back of, back of him there and his weapon as well. Um, my favourite kind of part of these is the uh, the head sprue. So you've got the obviously the one with the cap is the uh, the commander is all wearing gas masks. I like this guy on the end here who's um, foregone the warnings about the gas attack and has just strapped his gas mask mask to his forehead there and is probably shouting some sort of order. So that's the uh, the command sprue. Let's take a look at one of the others. So the the next unit we'll be taking a look at is the um, the anti mech rifle unit and there's the heads there as well. Now if you're familiar with uh, World War II history, you may be familiar with these kind of weapons. Um, the anti-tank rifles which could be used at the, probably the early war when uh, vehicles weren't as heavily armoured. Um, but this has been kind of rejuvenated in this game because this game does actually feature mechs, so like walkers and things like that. So this basically is a squad which is uh, designed for dealing with those. As before you can see that this actually comes with a, um, a separate head sprue. This has got four men, so you'll have a couple of extra heads spare for this for these particular guys, and these are just kind of standard um, Tommy helmet wearing gas masks. So this two-man team features obviously the the gunner here, and this guy here, uh, who's kind of standing at these is obviously the the loader and the ammo carrier for the um, for the anti-mech rifle here. So um, let's take a look at the next squad, which will be the uh, the P D squad. So once again, it's a uh, four-man. Four-man squad with some uh, separate heads there. Let's get these all in, all in the camera shot. There we go. Now you may be familiar with the the Piets, which are stand for Personal Infantry Anti-Tank, which is a uh, weapon employed by the British forces during World War II to as an answer to the the, the heavier armored vehicles that were being used. So these guys are no different, except for these Piet Ds. So these are slightly different than the uh, the ones that are historically uh, seen. Uh, Four-man squad, a another sprue there. So uh, once again. The weapons are, and the uh, the miniatures are actually nicely detailed. We've got some nice webbing details on the back there. Um, these come in four different poses as well, so you're not gonna, you don't feel like you're just getting the, a repeat of the same guy over and over again. So it's it's not it's quite nice that there there is a variation even in such a small squad as this. So the the next squad will be the heavy machine gun team, which is a, a three man squad. And we've got the heavy machine gun here, which comes with its own uh, tripod. Which this squad goes onto the uh, the 30 millimeter uh, base that we saw earlier in the unboxing. Um, we've got the the gunner, and we've got the the two loaders and the crewmen there. So, and of course, this comes with the the separate heads as well. So you've got the four standard infantry gas masks there. 
Now, um, the next unit I'll be taking a look at is the kind of one of the standard infantry ones, which is the um, infantrymen armed with the commando carbines, which you can see these uh, kind of Lee Enfield style rifles below. Um, these come with the uh, the standard infantry head sprue, and there's a nice variation amongst these, so you're not getting the same guy over and over ten again four times. But one thing I will just point out on these, because it's probably a bit easier, is uh, what I like about these all of these British miniatures is the the body armor that they're actually wearing. It's, you can kind of see it on the back there, the back panels there, and you can just about see it on the front between the ammo pouches. What I like about this, it kind of quite clearly sets these guys away from being uh, kind of your standard historical miniatures as they're actually a, probably a little bit more futuristically equipped than what we saw historically. Now you might also be wondering why pretty much all the heads that come in this set are wearing gas masks. Well basically the reason why is in the game, the game's kind of background in history, uh, the Germans employed a weapon called V-gas which is a essentially a biological weapon which turns the victims into zombies, which explains why there are zombies in the game. So, uh, in order to combat this, most of the forces within the game actually wear gas masks. So, I think it kind of gives it, uh, especially the the British style gas masks. It's very, it's kind of very symbolic, especially for people in the UK of uh, of the Blitz, and there's also kind of a little bit of a kind of like a scary kind of death mask thing going on there as well. So, it does set these apart from other ranges such as bolt action, which are more uh, based in historical fact. So continuing with the uh, the infantry, standard infantry, we have the uh, the four man heavy section here, which are armed with assault brands. So as before, they're just like four uh, different poses, and you get the uh, separate heads there as well. So just to get give you a bit of background as to how these infantry squads work in the game, is you don't actually use them as like a four man squad. What you'll do is you kind of combine these with the commando carbines that we saw, just, and then you maybe will stick a couple of. Uh, guys with the Piets in there as well to make a 10 man squad. So you're not kind of limited to only using um, infantrymen with like standard weapons, you can include some heavy weapons in there and without going into too much detail on the rules you can get some uh, quite nice versatility with special weapons. So this brings me to the final unit in the box set, it's probably my favourite as well which is the, the two man sniper team. So as you can see we have the uh, the two men here and the separate head sprue for them there. Now these are pretty much the same as the other ones except from We've got a kind of different camo netting. This guy is um, is wearing helmet kind of on an angle, so he can probably see better. Um, the camo netting continues onto the miniatures as well. We've got, we've got the camo cloaks, and it's also wrapped around the rifles as well here. Um, this guy is about to throw a grenade, and this guy kind of just looks like he's uh, spotting for prey. So as I mentioned earlier, you do actually get a few uh, spare of these heads to... Uh, once you've assembled all these miniatures, and what you can use these for, which is excellent, is um, you can actually use them on your Warhammer 40k miniatures if you have them, and it gives you some excellent um, conversion opportunities. So as you can see here, this uh, Imperial Guardsman uh, has been equipped with one of the heads, and it's given me kind of like a World War One uh, British-themed Imperial Guardsman there. So you can actually buy these heads separately from West Wind as well, so you can use them uh, with your 40k forces. Um, so let's just have a look at some of the scale as well for the miniatures. So we've got a uh, on the heavy section. So we're bringing in the Imperial Guardsman again. Um, it's slightly smaller scale than Warhammer 40k. Uh, very, very similar, but ever so slightly smaller um, for the secrets of the third route models. But if I compare it to one of the uh, the bolt action troops, the German trooper here, um, you can see the scales are, are much more comparable. So you can probably kind of interchange these and mix and match for conversions or whatever you fancy. So that concludes my review of the British starter set for Secrets of the Third Reich and uh, as my first kind of look at not only Secrets of the Third Reich but also West Wind miniatures I have to say I'm very very impressed by the quality. The uh, miniatures are very nicely detailed and I really like the aesthetics of them as well. It kind of gives you that sense of um, World War II's progressed longer than it had done in our timeline and so the technology of warfare has progressed and that's reflected nicely on the miniatures themselves. There are a few um, kind of mould lines and flash lines that need to be removed prior to uh, painting, but I mean these are kind of fairly standard for for white metal miniatures, and any anyone who's done any modelling previously won't have any trouble cleaning these up ready for painting. So if like me you are suitably impressed with the miniatures of Secrets of the Third Reich, you can pick up your own by going to uh, uh, West Wind Productions' uh, own website. I'll probably just pop an annotation link here, taking you directly to the store. Um, I will probably be taking a look at a few more of uh, West Wind Productions' other miniatures. Um, they also feature a um, Empire of the Dead range, which is kind of like a Victorian uh, steampunk as well. So 
uh, keep an eye out for some uh, future reviews of those as well. So as always, you can find more news, reviews, editorials at our website, talkwargaming.com. Uh, there'll be a link to that in the description below. And you can also subscribe to us on our YouTube channel as well to be kept up to date with all our latest video reviews and unboxings. Um, if you would like to see more of Secrets of the Third Reich, uh, let us know in the comments and we'll definitely strive to bring you some more unboxing videos. And we'll probably also be doing a uh, gameplay review sometime in the future as well. Thanks for watching and goodbye.